we're going to cover two topics one is the flow stock management and then uh, uh, then we're going to see the data collection okay so flow stock management yeah so basically in flow stock management um, we have this application we call as manage flow stock okay and that you can see under the manufacturing execution tab so basically we use this applicable uh, application basically uh, to manually receive or record the uh, inventory for the material okay and it also uh, we can do the goods movements as well like we can uh, return the uh i can receive the inventory basically we can do the return and scrubbing all those things we can do and uh, yeah so this is basically a kind of a feature for the uh you're managing your stock in the dmc just and keeping the record of all those uh inventory which uh, you you knew you you will use it uh when you are doing the component assembling and conception of those material in the shop floor so basically this application helps the operator to have a real time uh, visibility of the stock which they have in their shop floor uh, so they can easily understand okay how much inventory they have present in the shop floor and based on that they can do the conception or uh, if something is shorted they can notify the concern department and person okay so in DMC, we have a three different types of stock which we can maintain and manage. One is the uh, DMC stock. Basically, this is the one which we create manually inside the DMC. Okay. Basically, we are doing it for the, uh, uh, we are managing the stock for the locally created uh, uh, material. Like the, in our scenario, we are creating all the materials, everything locally in the DMC. For those, we have to manually create it uh, in the DMC as well for the inventory as well inventory stock okay next one we have is the erp stock this is basically for uh, uh basically that is the stock which is integrated and being transferred from the integrated system okay um yeah uh like it can be your s4 it can be your erp or it can be your s4 hana cloud and the last one is the uh basically your EWM stocks these are in uh, this inventory is uh, basically stacked from the uh, your integrated uh, EWM system so this is a different type of stocks you can maintain okay and also the stock management is de uh, defined or based on the uh, you can do in so basically uh, if you remember just let me open the application DMC system as well here so if you remember in the first session we uh, uh not in the first section yes in the third session where we are dis uh, deciding what type of inventory as plant should have we have two options one was a consolidated and another was the individual management right so there you can define or say what kind of inventory management you are doing for the plant okay that configuration you have to do it through the business setting uh, so basically what uh, does it do is that uh, so whenever um, uh, so basically there are different uh, modules so basically let me just open that first uh, the business setting So we have two options. Okay. Uh, so basically, we we want to do the inventory management or not. That option is also there. You can select it or not. Okay. And then we have two different types. Uh, with one is the individual or another one was consolidated. I cannot change this one. Okay. Let me see another plant. There I can. Yeah, so we have two options, individual and consolidated. So individual inventory is basically that uh, you are creating a goods movement for each event and then uh, stock, whatever you are having is in, uh, is uh, 
uh, updated for the each uh, goods moment you are doing. Like it can be uh, considered for the, uh, uh, for example, you have your uh, order specific or resolve uh, inventory you have, right? For their scenario, you can use it. Or consolidated is like uh, whenever you are doing this inventory change based on certain business uh, a key or something. Then in that case, the snapshot of the inventory is being updated or re received from the S4 side or all those things. Basically, it's based on the group or some based on some business uh, criteria. It is always on the each event of the uh, goods moment. Okay, so there's a difference. Basically, the consolidated one is there, right? This is the uh, beta version as of now, and that is also only available for the S4 HANA system, not for the ERP system. Okay, and also, uh, so basically, this one, uh, if you're using it for the S4 HANA, all the code movements types are supported, but for the ERP, it is only supported for the unrestricted uh, stocks. Okay, so that is one scenario uh, thing is there. So, this is not like if you're using console written and you can use uh, have all the features for that. So, in detail, you can easily understand with the help of recipe help document what are the different limitations are there basically with respect to the inventory with the different integrator system taking ERP or S4. Okay. For the invent, uh, in individual inventory, okay, uh, which this is the type. In this, uh, you can, uh, it is supported for all, mostly all of the uh, in uh, a moments type, actually. Like uh, if you have, a, uh, you have a 261, okay, or 311, basically these are for your inbound uh, inventories, integration. Uh, another is for the outbound, you can have, uh, G12, like whenever you are returning the stock to the shop floor, then 262 or uh, 551. So, yeah, these are the different uh, in uh, moment time which is supported by this uh, mode. Okay. And yeah, let's go inside the floor stock management. So, let's uh, see. Generally, which one in business, mostly which one is widely used? Uh, mostly we I have seen like uh, good moments like order specific with the reservation to like most of a lot uh, in my scenario I like whatever experience have people use uh, either order specific or go, with a reservation basically uh, good receive 261 or they are doing um, uh, or uh, 311 which is basically good receive without any re reservation and all this is one and uh, it's based on this business scenario actually how their inventory or management inventory management they are doing actually so yeah mostly the I have... mode is generally uh, for the plant okay so Few materials can be order specific, few material make to stock, uh, make to order scenario. Other product may be, uh, you know, not order specific, it's kind of a general make to stock scenario. So I'm not getting like uh, for the when to use individual or when to use consolidated. What is the difference uh, in that posting? Okay, so whenever you are doing in so individually some like consolidated is like you are grouping the inventory based on some business key or like some uh, uh, specification. Okay, then in that case you are using consolidated invent in individual is basically for every moment. Okay, uh, it will be transferred to the DMC. Whatever the you are doing, uh, good receive with the reservation means uh, any specific or with it. It is related to or specify or reserve for an order. You are doing this transfer, it come to DMC. Okay. Uh, or you are doing the good issue or anything. Okay. That is in that case, you are using the individual mode. Consolidated is still it's in the beta version. Mostly, if you go, I think currently it will individual scenario. And consolidated also right now is available only for the S4 HANA cloud, S4 HANA, not for the ERP R3. Uh, 
inventory i don't have an expertise on this inventory part also okay uh, this is i can tell you okay how to do good movements how to good uh, receipt kaise karna hai how to do the good issues for the specific uh, order or for in uh, unreserved stock those thing you can do and uh, yeah that i can tell you in the scenario where you do but if you go and uh, ask me like uh, how to create this snapshot for the concentrated uh, co- 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 consolidated uh, mode that does that's it's out of scope for this session and for my expertise as well okay now these are the this is setting integration how you are going to manage your inventory in the dmc okay so next we going to see how we how this application look like basically So as I told in manufacturing execution tab. Just one one more. My further plan is not uh, it. The setting is this was uh, is disabled. For this plan. See, we are doing this is a local plan. Okay. So for the local plan, I just told a concentrated one. I can do. i can have that option only when we have a integrated system i am doing this as for the uh, local plant this is my local plant i don't have an integration anything but other plant also other plant is also local right so i selected that housing plant okay if i go it has some configuration okay that the system is identify okay this is not a local plant you have integration and that's the option why you are able to see here so yeah manage flow stock this one application is there we can have a uh, manage the inventory okay here uh, you can see the layout of this particular application so you have a text search then you have an inventory id by inventory id you can search production supply area you can search so this production supply area whenever you are downloading from the uh, uh inventory form i think this is same as the storage production storage location i guess i'm not sure about that but i feel it same only because there's no place where we are creating the sort but it will be transferred from from the integrated system storage bin handling unit batch number and the storage location based on that you can do the filtration so this uh, production supply area or storage bin handling unit all these informations uh, we have to create in dmc or uh, how it is so these are the data which we will create first okay I means like there's no place where i can create in individually like we have a production storage location right so there is no such application where we will create whatever data you are sending okay whatever the inventory records you are sending based on that you can have this selection okay so let me just change the plant first So, so for local system, how it will work? I will show you just give me a sec. So here I am going to create inventory. So inventory I cannot create randomly. Okay, I have to associate it with the any for which material I want to do. Like suppose uh, let's create inventory for the plant. Um, so there is no data fill I have associated with this particular plant. Okay, as of now. these are the inventory information i can put so what is the inventory id this is what type of it is unrestricted block or quality inspection so i'm keeping it as unrestricted quantity to receive how much quantity i like to put like i'm putting 2000 storage location is the one which we have created for the production one if it is a serialized i can put the if i want to make a serial give a serial number i can do if this particular uh 
material is a batch managed and the field will be there i can do the batch manage as well and also uh, if you specify with any particular operation this particular uh, inventory needs to be consumed that i can give okay any specific order if i want make okay this particular uh, inventory need to be consumed at a particular uh, last six previous was the operation this one is order so any particular order so i can select that as well and any comment if i want so this way manually we create the so inventory so you can only create stock for the material for procurement high purchase or purchase this one so basically uh, system is saying that we can create material for with procurement purchase or purchase manufactured. Okay. Let me just see the type of for this material. Hmm. My paint is manufactured. Okay. Yeah. Understood. So basically, this is not something we are producing in house, right? Or it means like if it is, we are, is I put the procurement time manufacture. That means this particular material is being produced in sites. So I cannot have inventory for that. Okay, that means I am already producing it, right? So let's take some other material which is all our manufactured. Okay, let's change this and then again. Let's change it to purchase or manufacture. Okay save it and then i will try it again so yeah this is now created so i have in one inventory which is created by me and right now the storage location it does is unrestricted that means i can use this particular uh, uh inventory anywhere it's not like restricted or, or like you cannot use it so it's uh, right now it's on like it's available to use basically and this is not any uh, order specific or operation specific inventory which I need to consume. It's like I can consume it in fresh, uh, any order. Kajal, when you manually generate an inventory, then at that time you don't have an option for supply area, handling unit, bin. No. Yeah, it is has storage bin is there, handling unit is there. Uh, what else you need? But at the time of creation, the so system didn't ask to enter the detail, right? It did actually. Let me just create it again for you. Uh, okay. So basically, the thing is, while I'm creating manually in the DMC, those information are not like. So basically, these information are there, right? These three. These are the when will get transferred from the integrated system, either ERP or S4. Uh, so ERP, S4, or EWM. This is not manually. I can put it anywhere. So basically, so, if you see this application, is, uh, will... I notice when it is my creation, is, I notice that there is option is available for uh, supply and storage and. Uh, is it yeah. Maybe I've the right side actually inventory ID details about the tab actually. Yeah. Where is it? Uh, just now I have got actually where exactly I don't know. But I have got the storage bin and everything, all the details was available. That was in display mode when she created, no? That was. Uh, no, it was allowed actually. Yeah. This uh, yeah, I. This one? Anyway, uh, we'll just try to. Uh, yeah, edit. I think here somewhere I saw. Can you just go to inventory edit it? Yeah, so let, let me do my no problem yeah uh so basically you this application will be so suppose you are having everything locally okay this doesn't make 
uh, that is, I feel like it's not in much use, but whenever you have an integrated system, uh, it will have more information about your supply pin and all those things. Here, the system is not uh, allowing me to create these uh, information because uh, I don't have any application where can I create pin informations or I can create my area, oh, sorry, spelling mistake, any such, I, I don't have that. So these are useful when you have your integrated system. We'll have exact information, okay, this inventory is uh, currently present fair and what batch number it has, production area and all, or handling unit, all those information you will have it. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is all you can do right now. If you don't have, you're doing locally in DMC. Uh, this is how how much you can have the inventory management as of now. This is just having a record. It's not telling you the real time information about the stock or anything as of now. Okay. Uh, because it's not integrated with your in warehouse or anything right now. Anything else I need to tell about this application? No, I, I think we are good. So here you can see right now, since I created locally, it is coming as a stock origin as DMC. If it is from the ERP side, like using those uh, inventory IDOC, we are sending it, okay. Uh, those will be the ERP stock. And if you have staging this information or sending it through, from EWM, the stock origin will be EWM. We have one more application, which is we call it the staging, managed staging. This is more for the um, staging your uh, inventory. Basically, this is when you integrate it with your uh, ERP EWM system, uh, then you will have more about it. So here, we don't have the settings like it's currently it's not integrated so i don't it may make, make any sense right now so yeah this is one so these basically this application is basically used when you have an integrated with your ewm or material inventory and all okay in the floor stroke, you just have to understand like here from this, you will manually creating and receiving the uh, inventories stock and uh, and then you're recording the material consumption or you're tracing the material, how much you are consuming and from which inventory you have did. So those information, you can have it, okay? And yep, this is all right now you can do. You cannot manage your inventory with the help of DMC alone without integrating with your EWM. Okay. Every time you have to send the inventory manually, even if you have the ERP integrated or you, you can just automate that like um, whenever you are sending order, any order specific inventory is there, you want to send it to the yeah, DMC that also you can do, but that will you have to uh, do it from this four side or ERP side only. Can, can we see here the order specific uh, storage location on the stock, unrestricted uh, stock? The same with what you're looking at here. The quantity is 2000, right? For the storage mm -hmm. location, one zero one zero. Can we check mm -hmm. it order specific here? Is it available in close stock or no option at all? I didn't get your question actually. No, this is this is the usual material, right? Okay, see, so basically I created in stock which is uh, not associated with any order. Okay. If so I create right. order specific, this will come here only. This is a place we are creating and man managing and maintaining it. 
the stock you will see here only in this application only where you want to see yesterday we created one order right uh, we released the one order uh, so there was a stock right uh, can you just recollect yesterday's the material the paint whatever we had done with just now okay then uh, so for, for that specific uh, material there will be the quantity right mm -hmm. we release the quantity right so that quantity should be available right in uh, one zero one zero the storing location so we never manufactured that well we never completed it. we just created the order so once we completed the order then uh it will get uh uh, like the inventory will all get produced, right? Yeah. We didn't manufacture, we didn't complete that order. Yeah. We just created that order. Okay. Yeah, that's why it can right now you're not able to see anything because we just created it, nothing else we did. Yeah, anything else related to the how to manage floor stocks in DMC of now? That's, that's not very. Mm -hmm. Over, you, you mentioned the staging app, right? So mm -hmm. that staging in real time scenarios we are doing for uh, components you are talking or uh, finish look. Staging generally we, uh, we are doing uh, for uh, components, right? That's what you mean. Yes, right? yes, so, yes. Okay. So, and one more thing uh, in mm -hmm. DMC, we are pushing mm -hmm. inventories for components also, right? Yes. From uh, whatever stock. Available on uh, in in uh, in shop floor in uh, inventory basically. Okay, just simple okay, question. So yeah. Let me let me ask again. Wait, wait. Okay. So uh, in general, there are two types of location. What okay. one is the stock location, second is the production store location. We will transfer the inventory from a stock location to production store location. Right. Okay, let me answer this question. So whenever you are transferring your stock location to the production location, you are doing some MIGOR or anything, right? So in that case, if you're doing that, that says if you have an integrated system, the, uh, this ERP system will trigger an ad hoc also for the DMC and it will, you can see that inventory in DMC as well, basically for that uh, moment. And if you're yeah. doing an order specific also, then you're doing good issue or something from the S4 side, right? So that when you're doing that, then also the iFlow or iDog will be generated and it send the inventory to the MC as well. That's okay. I, I'm, I'm trying to understand the layout, how it works in DMC. Means uh, we are sending the inventory in DMC system, uh, you know, from stock location to production. Or we will do it in S4 Ana. Generally, when you you work, you know, that that I am asking with your experience, how you have seen that movement. So basically, we have to move the inventory from uh, uh, invent storage uh, stock storage location to production storage location. This is a process, right? For the how yeah. you, the same process, whatever the process you do for the in, in my execution, right? Mm -hmm. I'm the one who is performing on the shop floor. I need the inventory. If it is somewhere else, they will give uh, provide it to the production location, and from there I will pick it. Right, the same thing as that. No, uh, Kajal, I think question is now we have that uh, stock in the uh, storage location, ten ten, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe that uh, storage location it's uh, far away from that uh, shop floor. Okay, so you when you start the production, you have to stage the material from location to the production area. So for that you need a, your uh, EWM, right? For that you are doing, right? Using uh, it. No, no, without you EWM also. also. You can do in IM also. Okay. Mm -hmm. Means how do you use that uh, uh, stage app? For what purpose you are using that staging app? Just to give an overview. Right? So see, staging app, I just tell you just an extra information that is related to EWM. That's totally out of scope, totally out of scope for this session. That is related to EWM. Mm -hmm. So, not in relations, but in general, are we not going to discuss the integration with EWM, QM? I mean, so uh, the integration part I can tell you, okay, but uh, this is some functional question you are asking me about the process, how you do the inventory management. The process, see, I, I'm telling you, I'm not from the 
uh, I don't have the functional knowledge on the process mm-hmm. for the e-delivery mm-hmm. thing. That's yes, why yes, I'm we also don't have that expertise. But in general, like in in this mm-hmm. case, like how we do the staging of this particular material to the uh, show floor area. Hey, you know, Zarin Tech now offers SAP corporate training. That's right. Train your workforce in SAP with our comprehensive program. We offer customized courses, certified trainers, and hands-on labs for both individuals and businesses. Our standout features? Bespoke training, fully configured servers for practice, in-house materials, and a dedicated LMS. Plus, get session recordings and 24-7 support. From functional to technical modules, we have got it all. Choose Zarin Tech for SAP training and watch your team excel. Learn, upskill, succeed with Zarin Tech. Even you create the local also, right? It's mm-hmm. a valid scenario. You cannot directly issue from the location. You stay the real in the staging area, and then from the staging area you issue to the order. So that part. I think it's still there in S4. You have to perform. You cannot do here in DMC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted to confirm. Is it happen in S4 or DMC? Okay. Yeah, that part still you have to do it from the S4. And once you are uh, that part, like you have the location where it's currently, and you can easily utilize, then you send the inventory to the shop okay. floor person. So, and then, so, which inventory you will send from uh, S4 to DM? Means there are two types of inventory. One is lying on the shop floor, one is lying in the store. Since uh, we are not sending the store inventory, right? Then no, no. We, that the stock we keep uh, in our store, that inventory we are not pushing there. Only no. we are pushing the inventory lying on the shop floor. No. The production, production yes. Location. Yes. Okay. That's why if you see the name here, application is a floor stock. We are not talking about the uh, inventory which is stored in your uh, uh, warehouse or anywhere else. Yeah, whatever present in the floor, we are talking about that inventory only. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other questions? No, but when you say that floor floor stock, right? But the storage location is not represented as a floor uh, location, correct? It's a it's a yeah. storage location, not the floor uh, locations or uh, bean floor bean or PS uh, production supply area or staging area. Maybe I'm wrong in that part. Uh... I didn't know much about this inventory and all things actually. That's the thing. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong on this way. But, so, uh, generally, so generally, uh, like uh, as in your experience, okay, uh, which system that business used to do the goods movement, like staging and uh, you know, issuing, receiving, shall they do in DMC or in S4 or ECC? Same. From DMC, we are just receiving the inventory information. Okay. And that information we are just displaying to the end user, the operator. Okay. This much inventory is available. This is the location. This is the production area. And this is a bin. Okay. And that information we are providing to the operator. That's, that's it. Nothing else. Anything we are doing here unless until you have the either the integration staging and all those part will be done when you have the either the integration so when you have ah. the EW integration then all these things we can do in dmc or we will be need to do uh that also i will not be able to answer because i don't have any experience in the either loan inventory related uh a module actually so mm-hmm. so uh, like uh, 
in your implementation experience business use the dnc or uh, uh, ecc or s4 system for the goods movement which system they are generally using good movement is always going to be happen from the you have to trigger that it from your your system this is just an execution system where you are performing the uh, operations activities and all if you mm -hmm. you don't use the system for the uh transferring or the inventory basically this is from this simple answer okay let's try to understand as of now if you don't have an integrated system for mwm there is no much first, uh, features available only thing is like you can view the inventory you can do the good ratio can receive the inventory basically you can um, uh have the you can do the good receipt okay you can uh whenever you want to uh grab the inventory or you want to return the uh, inventory back to the source you can do that the source in the sense is like it's a for dmc it will be the erp and then once the erp receive that message okay this inventory has to be scrapped or have to return that system will perform the uh, back end logic for it okay the dmc where you are triggering and informing okay this one activity i want to perform actual actual action is going to happen in the s4 side it's not in the dmc side okay yep transfer everything you have to trigger it from the s4 side only here you don't have like a place where you are requesting anything from the system uh and so we'll move to the next topic for the today session uh will it will be the data collection basically okay so data collection is basically we are like so whenever we have to collect uh, information from the shop floor okay we providing some place of Place holder where the operator can easily uh, capture those data. Okay, and uh, these data can be used for the different uh, purposes, like to have a quality checks and all that you can do. So in the DMC, uh, you can have this data collection at a different business objects. Okay. it can be at your uh, work center level you can collect the data you can collect at the operation level you can collect at the material level also at the can collect at the uh, shop uh, order level okay so these are the different objects business objects where you can have this functionality so whenever we are having uh, So in the data collection, we will have the terminology. Just I'm going through it once. Okay, one is the parameter. So the parameter is nothing but the group of attributes or the fields, if you say in the layman language, of fields against which you are allowing the user to enter some informations. Like in our scenario where we are manufacturing a bicycle. Okay, so. whenever i am in the uh, wheel assembly okay where i am assemble the tire and everything and then there i will check how much air pressure is there okay i can ask so we can have a parameter which will be air pressure and the last operator will basically the operator have to fill the information like how much uh, air pressure is there like it's like 20 bars or whatever it is okay they have to put so such that is a like parameter basically a field where we are collecting a uh, information okay group is nothing but a common identifier for the list of attributes or parameters okay data collection process okay is a collection of information about this may be the nomadic so like the collective data data collection process okay basically it's about like collecting the uh, information different business objects where you are doing it and what type of information you are collecting uh so basically whenever doing the data collection we term as a we are doing the data collection process on different objects and different informations we are capturing from that point it can be a number text or it 
can be uh, in any alphanumeric boolean or it can be anything okay uh you can attach uh images as well or files as well we will see that as well okay next one is this how we access the data collection app so basically inside the uh, under the manufacturing master data tab we will so this is also a master data configuration basically uh, so inside that we will have a managed data collection app uh, we will look go and in, look into the data collection app okay what else it has we'll go and see the statuses of the data collection group we'll see the what are the different values are there and then parameter list also we will go and see okay so we have this manufacturing master data management and then we have manage data collection this application okay so by default whenever you're opening the screen for the first time okay these are the five predefined data collection group you will see okay as i told group is nothing but it's a group of uh, similar uh, attributes of or the similar event we put into one group okay like uh, uh, if i am in the wheel assembly where i am assembling the tube and the frame okay uh, i will be doing air pressure test i will be checking the uh, wheel trueness means basically the wheel is properly round or not so these are the different uh, events or different points where i will be checking the uh, operation right so those are the different points and i can group them because this is i am performing at a different uh, work center or i am performing at a in a in a same place or some common is there that is all like it's i'm doing it on for the wheel only so you can group your information based on some similarities or on this nothing so group is nothing just a group which we all know very well and so if you look at the screen layout it is similar to what we have uh, for the, our master data screens one simple text box also in the here we have a filter options also so these are the filter parameters which you can have and uh, yeah so by default you will have five group let's go inside any of it and see what it have first so on the top you can see the name of the group okay it version okay then the first is different tabs are there first is the main where you will have the information about the group okay so you have a description which is uh, second is whether it's the current op version or not then we have a status releasable new obsolete and hold uh, i think you guys all know how most of the time we are discussing about this then we have pass fail group whether it's like yes no pass fail group is we have to do or not then we have fail and rejected numbers how many fails and rejected numbers we can have and then numbers we can put here and then we have allow multiple collection collection basically so basically if i say no so at a time if any if any of the objects are from my signing okay uh, i will be allowed to ha uh, record the information for once only okay it's like uh, only once i will be allowed like uh, i am in the operation uh, 10 and i did the good receipt i used this particular data collection and did one data collection okay next time i will not be allowed to do because i already have collected but if i say yes multiple collections i can do okay um uh it's second tab is a parameter basically you define the parameters here okay last uh, this one assignment where you just assign it to the business objects and the custom fields you can create against the data collection as well uh here you can have n number of uh, objects uh, n number of parameters okay not like you just have one or two you can have n number of it inside the parameters you will have these options okay 
one is the type what type it will be so right now it, it supports only three types one is text numeric and boolean these are the type which is supported uh name you have to give then description it's enable or disable if disable it will not be visible and enable like you can collect the data uh then you have option to um So basically, when this data, this particular parameter is showing, what uh, well, uh, text you want me to, to be shown, so that will be the unit of measure, required or not required, that you can have. Okay. So this is the type text. If I am going through the num numeric type, okay. There's other options like, uh, if it is type numeric, these are the other options you can see. So you have to define a range minimum maximum or target value and then here is like options basically we are saying we, it, if it is fine if we have a minimum if it uh, it's going beyond the range of uh, minimum or, but basically it will be allowed you can enter the value beyond this range otherwise if it is no the system will uh, have this uh, 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 it will not allow you to enter anything beyond it actually. It will throw an error at that time. If it is having beyond it, okay, if you are overriding this information, then there's are two options you can do. One, you can uh, log an NC, okay, and so if you do this, you will have an option to choose the NC code. So you can have an uh, NC code and then, so basically what it does is, I, if anything is going beyond the threshold limit, you need to log in NC. You just enable this feature and it will automatically log in NC for the selected code. Required is basically it become a, a mandatory field you to enter these parameters and uh, how many entries you needed so that number you also can uh, enable it here how it's integrated with this uh, quality management because uh, for any process inspections we generally assign the quality check at operation level in the routing uh, so basically it's not integrated with the qm model first of all okay it's like mm -hmm. uh, whenever you find any uh, deviation okay you are expecting okay this particular quantity needs to be like suppose this order is having 10 quantity and you are doing a good recipe of 100 okay so in that case uh you want to notify no, no i'm not asking uh, about this deviation but in general i'm asking about this particular uh, data collection part uh -huh. right? So for the quality check uh, data collections, we generally we assign that uh, characteristics in the routing. For that that is totally page. different. The, you are talking about two different things. Mm -hmm. That is your in-process inspection you are doing. This is the data collection. Basically, throughout the process, if you want to collect some information from the shop floor, it's not necessary. It's related to your quality. It can be anything. Okay. Yes. And regarding this non-conformity also. Okay. So if something is non non-conformance, then we create the quality notification. System will create the quality notification. So this part is also that integrated or it's a standalone system or a... so quality notification I told QM part is not yet integrated, that functionality is not there, but you can do some custom development around it with the help of custom puppy and all you can do that okay so qm develop, qm integration is not there it means in process quality check also we cannot do in dmc right no that you can do so uh, dmc support in process inspection of type 03 only uh, and if you ever finish uh, inspection phoenix product infection inspection mm -hmm. only and all those things is not there so in process is supported only for the type i think in process is type 03 only yes, that yes. is that is only supported rest yes. not yet okay so can you please also write on it how to set up that 
in Bruce's world? Uh, that is totally S4 side ERP configuration. Because that information will be transferred to DMC based uh, on your routing mm -hmm. or, or your order. Right? It's not something which uh, you can... So basically that data information will come based on your mastered configuration or with the router order, if you have order specific routing, and it will, you cannot see anywhere that information in DMC. It will then, once you did the inspection and save your data, save your uh, results, it will send back to the S4. So in the S4, you can see the result and everything. In the DMC, there's no place you can see the inspection results. Uh, understand, but uh, can you just uh, show how to do that uh, results part? In, how to do that? Uh, currently, it won't be possible because we don't have an integrated system, right? Uh, as, as... Which app or where, where we can do that? I'm not asking to perform those kind of things, but uh, uh -huh. if I have an in-process quality check in DMC, where I can perform? Oh, through the ports on the right? The, the operator is going to be interacting with the system with the pod only. So in the pods, you have the plugins, uh, quality inspection plugins. So that plugins you can use to do this, uh, to perform that process. Okay, we'll see when we are going into four or. So let me create one simple. Uh, data group. Uh, what should I create? So I'm just trying to have some Let me put some uh, maximum value. Any idea how, what should be the wheel pressure should be? Air pressure. Let's give it 35. Yeah, 35. Uh, minimum, let's take it 30. 20, 20, 30, okay. Uh, target, let's keep it 32 or something. That's totally fine. Uh, unit will be, hour will be, it's like, Bar, we can say metric per unit or something. So there is no drop down, you can enter anything? Yes. You can enter anything, and there's a limitation of length as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't like to override this one scenario, okay? Later we will change it and see. Added. Okay. Next one is the assignment. So where we want to assign it, let's assign it right now. Currently, with the work center, which is a uh, assembly, wheel assembly. You can do this assignment with material outing. If you have a recipe, you can choose your recipe. Uh, op master operation, operation related also you can do. Then based on resource as well, you can do this. Uh, based on the order also, if you have any specific order for that, only want to show this, you can do this. Okay. But currently I'm just going with the simple case, which is with SM uh, work center. This assignment, you can replicate it with the different 
as well. It's not necessarily safe. You can have n number of assignments. You can have n number of parameters, n number of assignments. Okay. Yeah. I can go like to it. go to it. Yes, so multiple selections. No, this is one, one, one. So, you have to do every day. Yes, manually, you have to assign. Else, you can just automate this process as well. You can just write a PPD, just run that PPD, and just create this. What do you call? It? Just give an example. Just create a group or parameter, whatever assignment you feel like it's a very lazy work because in real scenario, it's possible like we can have huge work center or different assignments. Okay. Uh, you can, I think you can automate this. We have data collection APIs. This is log, retain, create a new data collection group, updated data collection group. Yeah. Inside this, we have attachment points. Attachment points, yeah. So this one, you can use updated data collection group. group before you call this endpoint to avoid the value for modified time parameter, the values obtained from get response. Okay, yeah, understood. Oh, uh, yeah, so you can use this API to do the assignment if you feel like that's too much of work, manual work. So, yeah, that you can do. Uh, Custom data, you can create so custom API from where we can call or what is it to be um, to use that API? What to be done so with all this API which I'm talking is a part of the production uh, PPDs production process design, which we can we will discuss later. Okay, okay, okay. Sure. or if you want to have a different screen out of the DMC. You can use this API to do this activity as well. So in terms of extensibility or use cases, DMC have much more to offer than the MEMI. Like it, it your use cases, your development can become um, not depending upon DMC environment only. You can do out of it with the help of these APIs as well. Okay, so we have created our data collection, first data collection, which is test group. Oh, sorry, not this is the name of the data collection. And these are the parameter I have. This is assignment. I could add it also now after the creation. So next turn also, I want to keep it text. Basically, previous one was a numeric. Um, I want to see whether the real Trueness means whether it is round properly or not. Okay. I can provide some example like it's round no dent. I don't know, spelling is wrong, I guess. Let, let's just skip one. So I can just give anything here. Uh, Roundness, I'm going to check in millimeter. Uh, required also. Let's skip not required this field and save it. So this one was required, I guess. Yeah. And we have assigned this particular uh to this particular uh, work center basically so whenever we are in this particular work center we will have this data collection group and we'll have these two options to provide some information to the system on these two parameters okay i saved it just updated if i want to come and see again yeah 
So if I put this hold or something, I cannot use this parameter specifically. It will not be coming. If it is releasable only, then it will be useful. Like I can use this one. Okay. This is all about how to create the um, data collections and all. So one more you complete, thing. complete any cycle for this where we, you will show us where we are entering those parameters. Yep. So there's one more topic will I like to cover first and then we will test these two features and the inventory also consumption thing part also we'll see. Uh, yeah. What sets Zerentech apart in SAP corporate training? It's our unique blend of expertise and innovation. We offer customized courses tailored to each client's needs, ensuring relevant, targeted learning. Our vast trainer database brings you wisdom from the best in the field. Need resources? Access our extensive training material repository anytime. We are all about measurable results, providing detailed student metrics to track progress. And we don't just teach, we build community, join our thriving social media network, connecting learners beyond boundaries. With Zarentech, you are not just training, you are transforming your SAP expertise. Just a small thing, which action it is associated with, good issue, good reception, which action it is Since Where will provide, uh, use these parameters? We have uh, created a group, so these are the standard group they have provided. Okay. So whenever you're using, I think the uh, good receipt plugin, you will have this parameters. This is entirely they have mapped it, but here you cannot see the assignment, but you can do the assignment as well. So in that case, it will come as a part of your good receipt. The assignment you can do, but these are the standard they have they have created as of now i cannot see the assignment but this why somewhere um, bash number content user ID you can no so the assignment is not done yet but you can do all this the parameter which is there right now so the group which are right now which is created by the system And so and we have. did we saw something yesterday like data type and data field. Any relationship we are going to use the data type and data field here to create data group? Any association or the do the totally different thing? Uh, there's one thing. So the parameter names, right? Okay. I think these are no nothing nothing. That is totally different. That is for your um, data type. That that the place was different. Okay, data type, data fields, which we are doing. That is for the uh, two events that is specified right now. That is for the assembly and the uh, non-conformance. Okay. Then you have the custom fields. That is only for the business objects where you want to add additional fields and this is different okay coming to this data collection group you you told that it has some internal assignments uh, good receipt, like the uh, plugin uh, no no but, i think that but does I'm... you created where it will yeah. trigger them the one you created it is associated with this work center no? yeah but what activity you will perform with this work center so you will be able to provide this parameter that depends it's on your master configuration. No, I'm asking while doing good uh, yield confirmation or good research. That I think you need to understand the business process first. The data okay. collection is not like your whenever the events you're doing yield or confirmations at that time. It's it's before you do actually. Okay. Uh, DMC specific actually, like uh, in ME also, MEMI also, this is yeah, specific to the system only. It, it will not going to be transferred to the source system. So it will be in DMC only. Okay. 
I uh, hope that is clear. Uh, that's good. Uh, let's move to the next topic first, and then we'll see all this together. Next one is a work instruction. Okay, so in work instruction is basically um, a set of instructions which uh, you want to display to the operators or uh, associated with their work center resource order. So all those things you can manage in DMC as well, or ma locally, or you can integrate with the uh, your integrated system like S4 or ERP. So this is a place from where you can access this application. It's again, it's a master data configuration. So for man manufacturing master data management, you can see this manage work instruction. Okay. So as I told you, instruction is not thing, but it's just an explanation of or what performance operation and activity they have to perform in a certain manner or particular order. Okay. So basically in DMCA, this instruction can be a simple text or URL navigating to any external uh, site, any external uh, or cloud-based application or anything. It will be, can be a URL as well. Okay. And uh, it can be a image. You, it can be a rich text as well means it, the text with the, inside that we will have different links and all that, that can be there. And uh, yep. Um, what else is there? Web page link to Microsoft to videos in any of the form documentation you are speaking with this duty. Okay. Yeah, so there's few pointers are written down here. Let me just read out there for you guys. Uh, first one is like if you have any document, Microsoft document, the link must should be begin with HTTP, then all it will able to open a free form and text type on instruction tab in the message mandate. If any readable work instruction located in a deep view of TD model with a step box that can be attached to multiple points. So, okay, we can have a 3D model as well. and. Uh, these are the one same thing which I've explained. Text will be there. This is the main point actually I feel here in this particular slide. So whenever you have any PPD or anything, it should it should begin with this one actually. Uh, yeah, this is an example how you can have showing here if you can see the video image with the text is coming. Okay. Uh, yep. Next one is how we are defining so this one i will go inside the system and we'll see so here this is you can see work instruction thing is an outer box integration with your s4 and the erp system okay you can manage uh, define one session have to define what is one is in the pod that i will use yeah this all we can see in the dmc system i'm just going through the ppd if i have something not missed yeah, this is all I'm going to tell you. Yeah. So 109. Okay, so as I explained, work instruction is nothing. It's just a set of instructions uh, which display to the operator and let them know, okay, what, uh, how they need to perform the operation or the instructions or any guidelines. Okay, if you want to display with respect to any business object, whether it's a work center, order, operation, or if it can be associated with your material as well, okay, how to consume in way or whatever anything is okay, then you can have that as a part of your work instruction. I think uh, I remember, Soil, you are talking about bomb level information, right? You are saying we have, can we have, we can have some texts which will describe, having a description about the bombs and all, right? I think in that case, you can utilize this feature of uh, in work instruction. Okay, it should be part of it. So whenever you are assigning that, if the assignment is done for the order or for the material, okay, uh, that instruction will be visible to the operator on the board. Okay, but you, you have to see how you are going to transfer that uh, instruction, which is a part of your uh, bomb as a material. <laughs> taking out it from there to present them it is a part of a work instruction okay, that you have to i think i'm not sure about how it can be done but that mm -hmm. configuration needs to be done from the so side. 
it's mentioned that it's out of bulk integration with the S4. So which yep. is the S4 relevant data means which data are referring to organization in the uh, S4 that represented organization in DMC? I think it's a material document, I guess. I guess as a as a material document, I think they come as a work instruction. Uh we can do one thing which the focus question. I will also see. Field mapping. This is as for HANA Cloud. This says production order, I guess it will come as part of. So we have this class characteristics. I need to see. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Which uh, that is also known. Any of you are from PP Guided? Uh, any comment on this? Which fields are there for the work instruction in the ERP side? <clears throat> Generally, we use the PA sheet uh, for the instruction sheet. This is out of box integration. Okay, I'm not sure about the mapping thing, but yeah, you can just look into the. But mostly, what I see is like uh, we are getting as a part of the order only. It's not like uh, uh, I don't know even we have a IDOC for the work instructions. I don't know. Not not where a much about this thing. So work instruction here you cannot see any standard or any default instructions. You have to create your own. Um, the best the layout will remain the same like other master data configuration. Here you have a different options. Okay. Like uh, in the main, we have the instruction name, version, description, status again, the same remain. And log viewing, yes or no, you can do whether you want to view the logs against this. Then, yeah, let me just fill it out since we don't have any thing. This is version eight. Mm. Okay. First, I have to either I can do the assignment or just save the data. First, I will create the instruction group. Kind of understand like that way. It's not created. Now the creation is done. Then I will add the elements here. Okay. So first, I'm gonna have a text file. Uh, we. Installation, maybe spelling mistakes. Just forgive me. What should I type here? Let's type anything. Test vision on test manufacturing. Out here, I can just change it. It's this color. Then, okay, we have insert link also. I can give let me just give the link of this one here. Mm -hmm. Save. 
Okay, so this is one element I've added under this instruction. I will have a text element and we'll have this information. I can preview it. So somehow it looked like this, which doesn't look very good. Let me change it. I will have this. Pull this up. Okay. And so if I could have text, I can have a file also. I can add URL as well. Headed text also I can add. Um, let's see how it looks like. Okay, this one I put as a header text. This is a normal text. Okay, let me just local file also save. Okay. okay, I don't have any file in the system as of now. It will not come. I don't have any location. Streaming, I'm not sure about that as well. What does it do? Let me just check quickly. But one thing is uh, URL, I can keep a URL. URP file URLs also I can provide if it is. So basically suppose like uh, I think uh, something you have uh, instruction, but the instruction inside that you have the URL to your team center data or any other data where you have. So that also come as a part of URL and here you just put the URL. So the URL will come automatically actually. So if I put here any other URL, let's see whether it's work. But in real time, it will be that URL which you are putting uh, coming from your integrated system. You are interesting. Save it. What type else is file? File I don't have actually right now. I did explain this song. So these are the different type of content you can show as a part of the action. Okay. Let's go to the assignment again. Assignment is same and as the data. Which file uh, contained part? Uh, Which so one? What's this one? Again, uh, Garden, I think it's the same question. So, with the DMS, how will we are using the DMS for all the old, uh, you know, documents? So, can I link that over here? I think for that, I need to understand the, this. Uh, ask, uh, the system you're talking about. I'm not sure about it. Mm, okay. Let yeah. me see if I can help. Yeah. Um, for assignment, uh, it's same. Like you can have this assignment on the different level or different business objects, material, routing, operation, work center, resource or order. So let's let me do to keep it simple. Let's have it on the work center only and save it. So this is how you manually create, but uh, mostly it will come from your integrated system as as part of your order, I guess. And uh, do you anyone know if we have any sp specific IDOC for the work instructions? Mm. No, then work instructions not generally that refers to the PIZ or uh, execution step. No, so if you have to transfer that information to another system, any SAP system only, how generally you guys do? You generally go to that uh, along with that uh, routing I got. Okay, so basically you're saying as a part of routing it should come, right? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Can I open the wrong one? Sure. okay if I can share your screen for a minute? Yeah, sure.
So, see, for example, can you see the screen? Is it visible? Can you yeah, yeah, it's visible, yeah. Okay. So here, see if we want to reach any document, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll do in that way, uh, in this way, like we have this uh, document info record where we upload the document and then we'll link with the whatever object, whether it can be order or bomb, routing or material master. Okay. Try to do one thing, Soil. Okay, I think it will come as a part of the. So try to release an order uh, with this uh, document. Okay, and see whether in your life or oh, document. Uh, I don't. Can you see this uh, segment or not? Or you can just check your LIPRO segment. Uh, it will have a better picture whether this uh, fields will be the part of it or not. Either your order or the routing. If you're basically where basically you are saying it more associated with this. Maybe your orders. So in that case, check your order segment, uh, order IDOC segments, and check no, whether you have these documents or not. No, no, it will not generate any order IDOC because it's all just a, it will send the link. But you know, to open the document, you need this DMS. Uh, it's there in that content server, not uh, in that application. Ah, then sorry. So, can, so basically, you're saying so basically what DMC will be, it will navigate you to that particular link, and inside that you have a system. So you have to log in. Basically, without a credentials, you cannot log into the content system, right? Uh, no, a content system, no one can log in directly. We can just use from the front end. Okay, there is no direct login in the content. It's kind of a just a database server where the data gets stored in encrypted manner. So basically, you are saying when you try to open this application, I can, uh, open this, I can open this file only from this uh, application. I cannot open this file from the database or from anywhere. Okay. So, th this is the one bar kind of uh, arrangement. Other one is you can here, you can assign other service object, okay? Arrangement. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so this is kind of a straightforward arrangement. It will save at the application level. Application. I will suggest. I will suggest you should try it first once. Try to send it to other to any distributed system, AMS, any AMS, if you have, yeah, uh, and see the how the your IDOG having those information. I will suggest to try it once before okay. uh, seeing whether it's possible without seeing it's saying it's not possible or possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. And I'm not also find able to find that image. Field mapping for this. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong place. But yeah, for time being, uh, since it is an out. Uh, integration can be easily done, I guess. it's We have that many times, so I don't find any obstacle like integrating this information. But maybe we are right now, what we're talking is we have two different places, orders, instead, integrations are, but that's fine. But you can just try it once, so if no, we can discuss that. Uh, on how to create manually uh, work instruction in DMC or in any uh, type of it. Okay, just, just give me a second before I should go ahead. I want to see if I have not missed any point with respect to this. Mm, I, I think I covered almost everything. Yeah. Uh, so for now, let's for today, we'll try to see whatever we have there today, like uh, work instruction, data collection, and then um, we try to consume some material as well. Okay. So first of all, let's see the pod. So first we'll go see and first two things, what is the work instruction and the data collection. And then later we'll try to complete the order. So right now,
we have these authors. I can use this one, this one. I can use any of this order. Let me check this one. Currently, it is on the second operation. Let me try the first shot on this one. This is also released and current status for the next operation only. I can use operating card as well. But for me, operations on these work centers. So I can switch in between the work centers. Mm -hmm. Then this is the operation which is is in queue. Okay. Let's click on. So this is a <clears throat> view which we have created. I think we already covered it. Let me just go through. This is a place is where I can do the SFC splits. So I selected this work center pod, which we created it during our initial session. Okay. And uh, I just sent, uh, selected the work center, which is WV Assemblies work center. And I can see there's one SFC on this particular work center waiting. Okay, means yet to start. I selected this operation, uh, SFC, sorry. And then here I can see the information uh, on the plot and different actions which I can perform. Okay, so here you can see the operation activity. So you can see the different operation which I can perform in this particular um, workshop. There's a two operation. One was one is the tree building, another is the spoke installation. Okay. Here I can see the status operator quantity is also coming. This is your driver one section you can do. Uh, at the top you have these buttons start, sign of complete, non-conformance will cover uh, to, uh, on the Monday actually. In the actions we have this particular button which is like to change the resource. Status. So initially, when we discussed right uh, in the resource types, so if you want to change the status, these are the options which we discuss. And from here, we can do this. Um, uh, we can trigger that equipment status change from here. So here, if you see, it is assigned to this action. Instead of that, you can just put here as a part of this uh, icon tab bar as well. So you can reduce the multiple select here. We can do that as well. But yeah, this one custom. But we created okay. This at the top, you can see there's a these are the options we have the serialize red and merge SFC split. If you look, because we are getting an options. If you want to split the SFC, I have to put the <clears throat> quantity like if it's 20, I want 10, 10, so I can do that as well. And SFC new SFC is getting generated. I can I can ask the system to generate that number or I can just enter anything like late okay. SFC or in your name I can give the gift to the SFC. You can put the order number which is R double zero one two like that. And then if I click on split it we will do the splitting of this SFC in 10, 10 quantity. Okay. Uh next one is the watch. For that I need to have hello. I have to have multiple SFC to watch it. Okay, so for that uh, thing, if we have, if we are on the this page, okay, we have multiple SFC. I can enable the multiple uh, selection option, and then if I click on the merge option, it will work properly. But in this scenario, <clears throat> it won't work because I have selected one SFC and I'm trying to do the merge. It won't work. Because it needs USFC to merge them, right? Uh, next one is serialize. Okay. <clears throat> so serialize is basically like uh, you want to have one SFC representing F one quantity only. Okay. So that's what the serialize is. One to one mapping basically, then we call it serialized. So in that case, if you want to serialize this particular SFC, uh, that there's a two place you can do. So basically, you're doing the order level serialize based on the material so that that definition you can define into your S, uh, managed material lot size. You can put the lot size as well. So 
whatever the order quantity is, every SFC will have one quantity only. If you have 100 SF order quantity and you did the header material is serialized and have the lot size one only, then you will have 100 SFC with quantity one E. Okay, but later on, if you want in scenarios where you come, where you, it was not serialized initially, but some reason you have to make sure like these components are process one by one, each quantity, then this is a place or functionality you can use. If I generate, it will generate this, these are SFC number. Okay, this pattern also, you can change based on the uh, pattern configuration you do for the SFC serialized in the in manage next number. Okay, if I save, this particular SFC will get converted into 20 SFCs with each with each SFC having one quantity. Okay. Uh, but for time being, I won't like to do that. But yeah, you you guys can try that. Okay. <clears throat> so this is my SFC. Uh, sorry, this is my SFC. This is my first operation. Uh, I like to start this, so I click on the start button. You can see SFC. You can see here message. SFC has been started the operation. Frame building. This is my first operation. Here you can see we have the work instruction. In this work instruction, this is the one which we created. Again, inside this we have multiple other informations, right? If I click on this, it triggered the first, actually the first instruction which we have. Okay, so it runs the uh one second let me just go through the configuration for this ones i forget we have multiple instructions right inside this one we have three instruction one is the text this one is a header text and this one is the link so see uh, as inside the pod we have that big country the configuration is in that way that if all of these elements has executed in one, okay. So that's why when I click on the instruction, if you see again, if I click on instruction, uh, this particular link has been uh, opening, okay. Here I can see the second instruction, which is build instruction, this one, okay. Inside that also, I have a link to another, uh, so if I click on that, it is also opening, but it's open in the same pod. So that configuration I need to change. Now, so this is the place where you can have your work instruction available. Since we have assigned this at the work center level, it now it is showing for this work center only. If I go to a different work center, this will not be available. I will show that as well. Currently, you can see the status of the SFC is inactive. Oh my God, my net is a little slow. Just bear with me for a while. And our text should be coming as your. Our comprehensive student metrics ensure top-notch learning experiences. We track engagement through attendance, participation, and video interactions. Performance is measured via quiz scores and assignment submissions. We monitor learning behaviors, including time spent and revisit patterns. Our metrics cover social learning, course completion rates, and even post-course success. With technical data on platform usage and device information, we optimize every aspect of your learning journey. So two things I can see easily. Uh, let's see how this header text came in picture actually.
okay my my mistake so so this particular uh, configuration is there right the header text so this is only for the order pod not for the other pod like operation pod or the work in uh, work center pod this is visible only to the inside the order pod and this will be the header of the pod actually so this content will be available at the top of the pod maybe somewhere here i guess Uh, but this is how your instructions will be available. Uh, okay, so links you can do, text you can do. Inside the text, you can have multiple instructions, link, images, all those things you can have. Okay, this is how uh, works. Uh, operator use the work instruction. They will come to this. They will see the instruction list. They will understand it, and then they perform their uh, operation. Okay. Next second point is your data collection, which we did, and we did it against this one oh, center on them. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, can we see this work instruction before we start this FC, or you can see only when you start this FC? No, you can see it before you are starting this FC. But let me just do the sign off on this SFC. Sign off successful. Okay. Here, yeah, let me go back. Okay. Uh, let me click work and we'll select it the same all day. So you see here, so for to view the work instruction, only criteria is you need to have a uh, operation selected. Okay. So since this particular instruction we have assigned associated with the work center, that's why you are able to see it here as well for this operation as well. Let me quickly do one thing. I will associate this with the operation only if i go to the assignment i will have the operation and i will select this one only okay i will assign it i will remove this one i will save it i will go to power i will just refresh the page so currently this particular instruction is associated with the operation only not with the work center okay in that case, all those orders, all the for so whenever I'm working on that particular operation, irrespective of what work center and order is, I should be able to see the instruction. Okay. But apart from that, if I'm working on another operation or another work center which does not have that assignment for this particular work instruction, I should not be able to see this work instruction. If I click on the spoke installation, here you see the work list is zero. But if I click on frame, I can see our work instruction. Because it is associated with this work sent work, sorry, operation, not with this operation. Okay. Same is with the data collection as well. Now it's depend upon the assignment. So currently this is based on the work center. So whatever the operation I'm performing on this work center, I'm able to see the list and I can collect the data. Okay. So let's currently, this is my first operation. Okay. And let's me try to collect some data that you can do before starting of the operation, I guess. <clears throat> Here we have two options. First one is the air pressure so, so this is a minimum or maximum range let's put something out of box you can see here as soon as i put something beyond this range i am getting a, a <clears throat> warning okay if i just reduce it to what is this 32 that warning is gone um I can put anything here. It's a text. Okay. If I want to put a comment. Uh, perfect. Then do. 
Okay. I added the values. I try to save it. All data has been collected. Since I allowed a multiple um, data collection, sorry, not here, here. So here I have uh, did allow multiple collection, right? So that's why if we go here, it's still asking me to add any parameter if I want to. Okay, I don't want to, I'll just cancel it. So if I go here, I can see it's done. But again, it's if you want to collect, I can collect the data. It, it will allow me. Okay. Can, can we see this what, what earlier we entered? Yes, that you can see. Just over the parameters, you will see the values that you have entered. So for the air pressure, you have entered this much for the this one. You said yes. So okay. this uh, data collections, uh, like, is it possible? Like, uh, you know, if we can trigger after else, like oh, we are going to produce 20, 20 quantity, right? So mm -hmm. after, uh, producing five quantity, I will do the data collections. Or sometime after uh, thirty minutes, I will do the data collection. This kind yes, of thing. you can do. Yes, you can do. There's no restrictions. Like... No, no, no restriction, but uh, systems automatically prompt uh, as soon as uh, 30 minutes is done to prompt for the data collection kind of thing. Oh, okay. Basically, you want to. So, right now I'm doing manually, right? Right. The first thing is you want to automate this thing. So, every 10 minutes. So who has just one question? Who goes? I enter this way to system will automatically fetch it from some sources or mm -hmm. you want some human no, no. user will enter yeah. but system will prompt for the data collection system will give the pop-up to enter the data after 30 minutes or uh, you know when you start that operations after 30 minutes uh, that uh, user or shop floor guy user is working on that he has to enter some key uh, some data okay just to make sure he will not forget so yeah. after every 30 minutes the system will prompt to did you get okay. my baby well, yeah yeah i got your point just trying to understand or uh, how we can leave it it's possible but uh, 50 20 like minutes in, 10 minutes there is, a, there is any possibility to set up the intervals or uh, you know, uh, it didn't see. Yeah, so you part. have a timer actually. So, like a virtual job actually can do. You can run a job in the background, which will run every 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And but that problem, right? Uh, so, what I will tell the solution first, and then we'll see what you will do that with that solution. So, you have a trigger options. This can schedule a job. It will run for every 10 minutes and give a pop up on the screen like, hey, it's a time to do a data collection or something like that. Or you want to uh, ask them to uh, open the data collection for a screen itself. Also. Okay, that is possible. But the thing is, um, it will happen for all the oh, sorry, sorry, it will happen for all the work center, or you have to define that work center for which you want to do that. So there is so many cases we need to discuss if you want to like if you want to implement such things where we want to automate it, all these things. So yeah. like possibilities are there, but uh, you uh, like have to get the real requirement to understand where and how and uh, what consequences game system will have because uh, you are continuously going to use the resource of the DMC to just alert the user to enter the work center, right? Uh, there are a lot of things to understand, well, right, before saying no, the no, uh, well, development, we can maybe achieve that, but in standard way, generally in general, there is a, like, whenever we have such things, there is a frequency or interval, okay? At, or quantity, quantity. So you can decide whether you want to color, enter this data based on the quantity or interval or no. Then yeah, it's a one time or multiple times. Then there will not automatically trigger. So that kind of it's a standard setup. No need to do anything or any job run. Okay. 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 Okay.
okay when you start that operation system will calculate that uh, time and prompt it so but uh, as of anyway. now i have worked i have worked on the sapme as well but this kind of feature is not there and here as well okay so the man it's like a, you have to manually collect it work around you can do but as of now no okay yeah um uh, here what i was showing is like i can do multiple uh, collection again the same parameter right but if i change the setting if i save it so uh, okay. if you maintain this data collections as a mandatory field in some of the fields right mm -hmm. so if user don't do the data collection and try to complete that operation Will system allow it? Oh uh, no! Will not allow. You have to enter those fields. Here, if I go to data collection, you can see this collect button is not disabled. It won't allow me to add more um information or against this parameter because I already have it once. Enter. Ah. Uh, can I change it also? By mistake, if I did some wrong wrong entry. No, what you did, it's like that. No modification can be done. Ah, uh, or if you want, uh, let me just see. From the DMC side, uh, there's no feature where you can modify whatever you have complete uh, like entered here. But update, let me see if they have provided an API. So by the logic, you can do that. Uh, let me just see if it is possible to update the data, but mostly no. once it's collected, you enter the value. Um, you can not change it. This is to log the information, return, create a new group, update the data collection. This is for the group, not for the values. <clears throat> These are the get APIs. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Once you enter the values, you cannot modify it. For sure. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this is two things. Let's see about the component thing. So, uh, we don't have material component. So these are the two components right now, but I have not created any stock against these. Let me quickly create stock against these as well. So then we'll see how it, uh, it getting consumed and all. <clears throat> Low stock, right? This is for Okay, one more thing I have to read. Uh, mostly my whatever the material I created was manufactured one. Okay. These are the basic example where I can see I have not an expertise on the master data configurations like types and all. So we are still let's say we have twelve hundred, twelve thousand actually. I have one location only. I will do one thing. I will keep this as uh, not associated with any order, and the next one I will create with order quantity 100 only. Okay. 
I think it was which order? Order two. Okay. So we have the star right now. Let's try to see if we can consume this. First, we let start the operation and consume it and then. So there's one feature as well. You should, you should, we can raise alerts. Email configuration also you can do some email server setups you have to do a process here. Okay, like suppose if I am creating an in here alert type, okay, and um, who is the uh, <clears throat> user two basically? SAP access two and three. Well, I will set it for the free one, I guess. The, oh, this was processor. So, notify is the basically place where we are notifying the user. Here is I'm testing the alert functionality. So I said it. So here you can see the message will pop up to everyone who is in this notify list. Alert has been posted. Like you can see one notification here. I can see the message as well. So all other users who are will also will re receive the same notification. Okay. This is one thing. There are a lot of app uh, plugins are there. There's big bus uh, enough digital session, right? So those you can utilize for as per the need. <clears throat> now let's come to the business assembly. If I want to do the assembly, here if you see the component. I didn't select it. I think this inventory thing doesn't fall like. It didn't get consumed, I guess. Maybe the reason is um kind of regarding mm -hmm. this alert alerting part. Um mm -hmm. so this is the only functionality or there are some uh, things like uh, auto generated alerts that we can set up based on certain events or configure so those kind of alert on specific uh, task or processes or yeah those you can do actually let me just see if you have an api for alert as well or in ppd if it has then let's see. Yeah, so yeah, mm, like a notification. This is a pod plugin message. Right? Mm. Do you need to trigger it from the uh, here only from the. There are, there are some like manage alerts, kind of thing, or manage alerts or something like that. Manage so basically, yeah, there's, 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 so you can do that as well. Uh, so the law it's in detail actually. Let me just put one thing. So manage alert is the application we can um have we can do. Um, this is a manager that will you will be able to see, but there is an application called alert type and to so here you can create your alert 
uh, alerts actually. So here you can see some alert types are being Here you can see there is one or uh, by default they have created different uh, alert types. Okay. Uh, just look at an example of this one. App flash failure. So what it does it do? Uh, so these are the options where you can see uh Usage of flows. This one. one second, this give me a second. I will just explain how they have set up this one. But if you are going to cover this topic in some other days or later on, then, then it's fine. We can skip for now. Mm -hmm. Alerts, I think I'm not sure that is a part of the it thing, but yeah, I can grab. It's what then we yeah, have we can cover later as well. No problem. I will show you this is the standards they have, but you can create your own custom alert types and then you can associate with any event like any process you run. So I will like you can define that events, any business events, or you can just with the user in, uh, interaction also you can raise these alerts uh, apart from that uh, standard which I showed right types. Apart from that, you can have your own as well. Component is not working because I feel like um, this one is not done. Um, what do you call it? configuration is not done actually for the component touch. <laughs> yeah, so I will do one thing. Uh, I will do this integration. And the Monday we can just look into this part. Uh, as of now, I have to go and do this integration first, and then yeah, we can see how the material consumption. So basically, what expectation is whenever I'm consuming this uh, quantity in the stock, right, flow stock, I can see the, the stock re got reduced. So currently. It was not happening. Maybe one second. No, let me do one thing. I will assemble this as well. And I didn't put any data to collect it. For this also, I can just show you one more thing. Just one second. So while doing the assembly, I have said this one, but I want to have inventory ID or something I want to consume. I will save it. Okay. If I come here in the board, just in between. Now I have to go and refresh the sound. So I'm just trying to tell you like how this field you can utilize and where it is coming. So that would if um, basically integra uh, integration is not done too mostly, I think the quantity will not get reduced what I'm expecting. But other things I can show as of now, the quantity uh, correction, whatever the correction is happening, right? it's getting reduced that we can see on Monday as well, no problem after the integration. Uh, yeah, so if I click on assembly, so you can see this field was not coming initially, but now it is coming because of this particular configuration. If I select something else like GA info or SFC only, so whatever the Field that we have configured in this data type uh, will be visible here on the pod. So here I'm going to collect the. I'm just using this inventory SFC or inventory ID I have to use. I will add. Okay, all the component of this assembly has been done. Assemble like this one. Okay, let me just complete this operation. Now you can see this is moved to the next operation, which is a frame painting. But before that, let me go and see if this any change here. No, there's no reduce in the on hand quantity. It should reduce, or this one got reduced, which is yeah. This one is reduced. Okay.
here i didn't added the part from where it should go because of that okay i will just look it in the thing okay but mostly once i added which inventory i have to do uh, consume here uh it yeah the quantity got reduced uh, so i can see uh, you were you know you were know, you were changing the screen very quickly can you can you repeat that step uh, you know go to sfc go to order and uh, and just put mm -hmm. the consumption once again ah uh, one sec can i have to change the work center now and did you press the complete button or it yes. automatically move to no i have to press the complete button so an operation uh, i don't have any component let me just quickly one thing i can do is this they create an order and uh, can you when i can record this uh, uh, activity like set up machines labor or any other things i think uh, in the dmc manually i think uh, i didn't see any place in the operation routing basically at the routing level at the operation we can assign that thing in dmc i didn't say any place holder where i can create but when it is coming from the integrated system that you can see in the routing manually i didn't see actually there pop or the id is already there no for yield confirmation there is a different application no 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 not yield he is asking for the activity confirmation right Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's the same thing. Sorry. Yeah. Yield and activity are same. While doing thing. activity only, we will report the yield. Okay, uh, I didn't know that. Um. Okay. So the parameters are there, right? Uh, what are the activity you want to perform apart from the yield, actually? So those I cannot maintain here in the manual in DMC, but if it is have integrated system, it will come and you can see those parameter in your routing. Okay, yield. Uh, you as soon as you completed your operation, right? Ah, uh, will trigger the quantity yield. How you are working? Yeah, quantity yield. Yeah. So this is my new order. So what I did, I just first run the operation. Here, if I'm doing the, then here I can see the. Okay, for the, this one, I didn't have maintained the form data to collect. Okay, so here I have mentioned what assembly I'm doing from the inventory I selected. This is the quantity. This is the inventory which is associated with for this particular material, right? So I selected that one. I added it. This is for sixty, right? Like goes, it get reduced. Okay, so you can see the uh, quantity is getting reduced as soon as I'm consuming this material in some operation. Okay. Uh, but for this one, I think configuration is properly done. So if I go to material, for the This is what building you are. Now, no, yes. Just one second. Like you, you selected somewhere that inventory SFC. What is that? I'm saying this is the inventory which you have to consume from where I have no. doing the while, component assembly. While while doing the assembly, you from drop down option you selected some as as uh, inventory SFC. That's what I'm showing you right now. This is okay. Okay, okay. That's the inventory ID. Okay. Yes. So basically, I'm telling the system. This is a inventory which I'm using while come. Ah, uh, this is a component from where I'm picking, or this is from where I'm picking the component. Let's go and simply and in here. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Why this is happening? I didn't save the material. What? 
Okay, I think I didn't save it. Still not coming, right? Zarin Tech's SAP Training Delivery is a well-crafted journey. We start with a discovery call to understand your needs, followed by a tech call with a certified instructor. Our customized curriculum leads to live, interactive training sessions with hands-on labs, access course materials through our learning management system anytime. We track your progress with detailed metrics and conclude with a fun, gamified final quiz. Upon completion, receive a verifiable certificate. With Zerontech, your SAP training is not just comprehensive. It's engaging, practical, and tailored to your success. Something is wrong. Data to be collect, I have mentioned it right for this particular. As I'm selecting the right material, component, building rod, I've seen the building rod. This is this one. So it's fine. I've seen when we only I'm doing and uh, I saved it. So this should come at least in anything should come here. Let me just go and refresh one more time, otherwise we'll see it later. Now I'm under on this what issue was like this. No, I have no idea why why it is not coming. No, I will set this thing. But I really uh, so what when we do this, okay, we are defining the parameter uh, what type data type I'm we are about to collect. That information will come here. Let me try a different one. Last time, otherwise I will look into this issue and we'll see in on that. Okay. I think it should work now. Mm. No, something is wrong with this configuration. Okay. No problem. I will look into this. So I have this particular material that's assembly data fields are not coming. Okay. No problem. Material app, <laughs> you have selected the assembly option. Yeah. Oh, one second, one second. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong place. Is that? Assembly composition data type. Okay, 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 okay. So, okay, understood. So, there's a two places where we define the components. Okay, so mostly what is happening, the preference is given to the component level configuration. Sorry, the bomb level, whatever we have, the configuration for this particular that is getting a preference. Okay, if I see right now, if at the material level, I have the info. What is that? Let me just one second. This is blank, right? That's why it was coming here. It's not. If I give the inventory, so I'm expecting that this will have the preference over this one, and I will see the inventory field instead of that. Oh. I need to refresh the page. I'm getting inventory and SFC. Whereas the material configuration has your info, which has batch number or some other fields that is not coming. If I change this one, if I change this to the null and save it, and if I make a change here to the 
GI info, then I will be able to see the GI info field. So basically, it's indicating or saying like this configuration, what we are doing at the bomb component level has a preference over uh, this. OK. I save this one. Oh, it's already updated. That's good. Now it's a coming batch number and storage location info. So you can enter those fields and can do this. So, yep. So, can so you go to uh, manage material app just once? Yeah. That same option, assembly option, can you drop down again? Or what yeah. would be the case if a material is, uh, you know, in house semi finished? Which is first manufactured, then it will be consumed under finish with which option we can select. Or then at the yeah. bomb level, we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Suppose we have a material which is a semi finished material that will also be produced on a line and then it will be consumed in a finished good material. We can have inventory, I guess. Whenever your semi finish is getting uh, created, right, in the DMC itself, we will have one. one inventory will be created against that good receipt okay so you can have it is you can have sfc as well also so because again the sfc are having that inventory but uh in dmc will have inventory id against this that good receipt so i think it's better to go with the inventory id only or okay. yeah, if, if while doing that uh, as uh, control that sfc processing for example, we produce 20 pieces. Out of that, one is you know, not fit, and we have to pass 19. Is that possible? Partial confirmation, you are saying. In the uh, discrete. Yeah. Uh, one, maybe we can reject or scrap it off. Uh, okay, so complete will work on the point. The complete, we need to check whether for the process we can usually do we have that option discrete uh, i never did actually but quantity i will see maybe that is possible through non conformance i can mention the quantity but i have to see that part so i cannot comment right now for discrete need to check but for process if you're doing the partial conformation and all that is easily doable nothing fancy uh, just now just last one uh, coming to soil question soil last one thing uh, activity confirmation and get your right to the sorry so in S4, what we do, we post uh, yearly confirmation along with the activity time to be post. So that thing, activity time posting, right? Where will it happen? We will check now. Huh? If you can tell us now. See, so when you are doing in S4, uh, so I was talking about the uh, your eleven. So you, so you post. You, you you manufacture 10 products it took uh, 10 minutes of labor time and 30 minutes of machine time do you post something in dmc or not that time we can do we can do it as well. so here the time ticket right that posting will happen yeah. uh, uh okay. separately and then the yield confirmation happens separately both are not together so in the uh erp i think we can do uh both together that's okay just yeah i just want to do one thing okay We'll okay. see that I on Monday, right? We'll continue on that part. Activity confirmations as of now, I cannot do actually because of the system okay, configuration. Show that, that, show that app itself, uh, we can see. Yeah, tell us the process. Don't post it. Yeah, that I will. I will explain. Yeah, yeah, that that we can go through. Yeah. Next, I think for Monday will be. This is because of non conformance. I think it's, I have to go so much in detail in that. Oh my God. I think we have around 20 slides for that. Oh my God. Okay. No problem. 
So yeah, we will go through the daily in the non-conformance and then I can show you that uh, plugin thing. I can show you right away at this one. Okay. Uh, what are the different statuses of that operation? So SFC. Okay, SFC. I will just I will tell you. So first I will tell his question, Rahul. So this is the one plugin, activity confirmation plugin that. Then, but I don't have any con. So I will the activity as for your configuration and your system. If you have machine. Set up, downtime, rework, all those things based on that. All the activity will be shown here, and uh, can can have. So basically, click on report. You will have the list, and again, then you can put the uh, time. So you can put the actual time, and side by side, you can see the standard time also, and you can save so that will be reported to S four. Here you can see the confirmed uh, whatever you have same to the S4. So all this information here you can see. Okay. Uh, coming to your question, Rahul. So we have three state three or four. One second. So first we have a new status means the SFC has not been started yet in any place. Second is queue. Next one is uh, uh, active. Third is done, and then we have. Uh, Hold. Yep, this is all we have. Or else, if you want to need no more. And, uh, for operation. For operation. What do you mean by operation? Operation can be on release. It can be in a. Okay, so uh, operation your can be in a new state, releasable state. Obstruct and then hold status, but I think you're asking something different. <laughs> so you are running your SFC on that operation. So when I say active, hold, so on the S operation level, you can either do it can be on queue, it can be on hold, active, new. This this is all you can have the operation status as well. I think your operation status will not be different than your uh, SFC status. I hope uh, you are able to click, uh, like try to connect the dots. So SFC is nothing as a name uh, for the, all the play, uh, operations that you're going to perform, right? So if you are in the first operation, that is, you are working on it. So overall, the status of this SFC will be active only, right? But uh, if you not working anywhere that means you are waiting suppose you completed this operation you are waiting for the next so your next operation is this one and you have not started you are in the queue so operation status will be queue and the status mm -hmm. overall status of the sfc will be in the queue right i hope you are so sfc is a more operation right just trying to understand the hierarchy SFC is above the operation. Do you think any difference is uh, how how this operation status differ in the uh, S4 ERP system? Can you just let me know so that if I, I, I might be possible, I'm not be aware of that thing. Yeah, so we have that like, uh, you know, uh, really then partial conform, finally fully conform component. So, yeah, so that is what you finally can partially conform. So, status at the older level. So that is your the status of your order as such, not the status of the operation, right? Operation also we have a partial confirm, fully confirm, PC, PCNF, CNF. How like, can partial you do also. the partial confirmation? No, 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 no partial confirmation. Like okay. you, are, you are doing confirmation with respect to activity, not order. So, for example, you post activity for first operation, it will be confirmed. Then second operation, it is not confirmed, depending. So, it's, so it, that's why it shows different confirmation level, uh, status with respect to operation level. Are you talking about confirmations? So, status we are talking about. In the screen, uh, uh, partially confirmation is uh, 
<laughs> we do partial confirmation also. For example, the order will go for five days. Every day, every day, end of the shift, you will go the confirmation. Let me do my part. Yeah, actually, in discrete, uh, there is a possibility. Like, if you are going to produce hundred quantity, right? So if we are already, already done with the 10 quantity, then we'll pause that 10 quantity. It's a partial confirmation. Then in that case, I think uh, if that is a scenario, then uh, it's better to order pod. So order pod you can use for both the scenarios for process in the same uh, power. So there there you can do operation, the operation pod. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, operation pod is also there. Huh? If I go to the operation pod, let me just open it. No, but the functionality will be the same, right? The user who are working at the workstation, so he is uh, he is more uh, interested in that uh, work center probably. That's why I'm saying, oh, if the case where you have the scenario where you want to do a partial confirmations and all, then you can use order pod, and then from order pod you do machine confirm pod. Quality confirmation. That's right. No, no. What is they are, they are confirmation they are posting at the operation level, not their order level. I understand. I understand. To do that to quantity uh, operation level only. Just give me a second. So operation will not fulfill your requirement, okay? Because it is again, it's a uh, Discrete confirmations, quantity confirmation will happen, okay? Not partial, but if I go, order, is order, order, order. I have to make a copy of it. Once again. Orders. Wow. Outcome. We are in the plans. Order is same only, right? Plan start is 18 to 31st July. 18 to 31st July is that only. Okay, so basically in order pod, you have the uh, flexibility to do partial confirmations. Okay, if I go here. Here come so you see here quantity confirmation is there, right? This quantity confirmation allows you to have a partial confirmation as well. So you can enter the um, quantity if you have 100 but you want to confirm only 10. You just use this plugin to do that confirmation, so it will do the uh, confirmation for the 10 quantity only. If that is possible. I don't know why this part is not working as of now. I think I'll try to cover the NC and then the mm -hmm. rest okay, of the topics. The code, the operation, mm -hmm. see, there are many things. So. Yeah. Not, not code designer, that uh, manager, uh, that POD, POD. Operation okay. Yeah. yeah. Question pod, you want? Both in the mode is also okay, whatever. So here we have this, like what are the different, or we supposed to work on the scheduling, schedule part and all other things? We can do that, what is the schedule? Uh, if we want to change the resource, if resource is available or not. Those, those things. That's why you're talking about uh, changing the status of those resources. No, no, no. See, uh, we uh -huh. have that schedule, schedule part, right? Where, where schedule part. Order, order schedule part. Uh, or if we want to switch the resource, or if we want to like uh, to check the resource availability, 
before uh, release, you know, start the operations. Oh, okay, okay. You're talking about the mm -hmm. real thing. Okay, that is a different module. That is the third module, I think. So maybe okay. next we will having uh, those things. Okay, and here we have this start complete sign off. Uh, there is auto mm -hmm. schedule also. See auto schedule activity. I don't know what to do. Oh, nothing. It's just some uh, information you will have uh, against that particular selected uh, SFC or the schedule information. Nothing else. Okay. What is the difference between complete and sign off? Okay. Complete is like uh, you're doing the confirmation. Mm -hmm. Sign off is like uh, in between you are taking the so basically you are not completing the order you are not doing yield confirmation or anything you are just taking off from the operation or the work centers due to some any break or anything you are okay. just saying okay I am working on it but for time being I am not working on this mm -hmm. and I am not and not no yield confirmation nothing you can do activity confirmation here, but no information in there. So this sign off, uh, this is something related to our OE or you know when we are calculating that uh, hours spent or times uh, time taken. So it's related to those things. Ah, uh, yeah, it can be used actually. Like for what time the resource was or productive means someone was working on some SFC was working on that. Yeah, mm. will be in use. So there is no machine, machine start. There is a stop, start, stop. Like don't want to sign up or don't want to complain, but just want to stop. That is your sign off only. Uh, what do you mean with stop? What what are you expecting from the stop event? Uh, suppose I want to do some setup change, right? Mm. I will stop that particular for that particular time to do complete the my setup and then we'll start again. It's not a sign off. You want to do the setup end, right? So you just build a logic for the setup end. That's it. You can build your own logic. You started the setup, then you just want to end the setup. You provide one more button, write the logic in the back end, and it will do that. Sign off is basically indicating that operator or who is working on this particular SFC on this particular resource is not more uh, want to work or not available to continue the job due to some XYZ reason. So he was uh, doing the sign off on this particular SFC on this resource. Can you go one first to that call center code? Just one, one option. Yeah. There is a machine start. What is the use of this machine start? We created this. Start the... This is a custom. So see, this, these are all the buttons which is configurable. You can do as per your logic. This one for the demo we did in the first session, right? We created one button, we put the icons, okay. machine, we added some plugin in the back end. So that is that. Okay. Yeah. 